Hello everyone, welcome. Lots of folks uh, coming in the room at this point and getting connected. So just wanted to have a little audio go in here so that you would know that you're in the right place and that your audio connections are working just fine. I am Amy Johnson, um, right here in downtown Tallahassee in the Division of Library and Information Services. Um, just saying good afternoon and welcome as I watch people come in to our virtual room. So welcome, so glad you all are here um, on this uh, beautiful Thursday afternoon in what is still probably uh, considered early June. Uh, we're really glad that you're here uh, this afternoon. Hi, Charles. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, can you hear me? I can, Charles, loud and clear. Oh, great. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't um, heard your voice in a while, so it's great to be in the meeting here. Looking forward to it. I know, I know. And, I, and what you missed earlier, Charles, was I was having some um, computer issues, and so I was having a little bit of a panic attack, but I've changed computers and everything's all okay. Um, the other computer, maybe a little... If maybe if I just put it away and ignore it uh, for until tomorrow, maybe that will make things all better. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This, well, great. This, Good to be here. Today. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, Charles. Great to hear your voice. Thank and you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Welcome everybody else. We're so glad you're here. Folks are coming on in. It's about 2.59 right now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, mute myself um, and have another drink of water. And then right at three o'clock, we will get started with our presentation for today. So welcome, everyone. So glad you're here. Um, I'm going to mute myself, but I'll be back in just a few moments. Good morning, everybody. This is Tom Pena. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started soon. Uh, thank you for joining us here at the Division of Library Information Services. Uh, before I turn things over to Amy, uh, I'm going to go over a few quick housekeeping items about using the so software. Uh, on your screen, uh, you should see a screenshot of the control panel if you're accessing this webinar through the app. Uh, if, you're, if you're viewing our webinar from your browser, your screen will look a little different and we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, currently, we've muted everybody to help cut down on the background noise, but we do want to hear from you if you have, if you have a question. Uh, if you wish to speak, please click that hand raise button and we'll unmute you. Uh, we also have the chat box that you can use at any point. And if you're watching this webinar through your web browser, then your control panel should look like this. Uh, again, if you if you'd like to use your mic to ask a question, please click that hand raise button and we'll unmute you. Uh, you can also see the chat icon. If you need to check your audio settings, click on the set, uh, that settings cog and it will open up your audio settings. If you have any problems with the software, please reach out to the CE team and we'll be happy to help. Uh, that would be me and Allison Davidson. Uh, additionally, we are recording today's session, so you will receive it in an email after the webinar and it will be available on our YouTube channel later. And with that, I will turn it over to Amy Johnson. 
Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate that. And thank you to Allison as well. Thank you so much for uh, providing the technical support. Um, I could not do this without a lot of support and, and technology support being part of that. Um, Allison and Tom's work means that all I have to do is just look at my notes and look at the slide and make sure I'm in the right point place and then just talk. So it sure makes things very easy. Welcome everyone. I am Amy Johnson, the director of the Division of Library and Information Services, and we're so glad you're here. Um, if we can go on to the next slide, that'd be wonderful. Thank you and Allison for, again for that, tech, that technology support. Uh, so this is the, uh, the division update for the Division of Library and Information Services. We are a part of the Florida Department of State. About once a quarter, um, I have an opportunity to come uh, together with you all uh, to talk about some things that are going on in the division and give you some information about upcoming programs, maybe um, you know a couple of of teasers about things that are coming down the pike uh, to hopefully pique your interest. Uh, so um, hopefully I'll hit the mark on all those things this afternoon as we're together. So glad you could join us uh, this Thursday afternoon for our, for a division update. So if we go on to the next uh, slide, we're going to start as we always do in our division update, sort of thinking out about the division and budget and staffing, all those things that are um, very important. Um, so uh, looking here at division staff, staffing numbers, our full number of both full-time positions as well as our hourly positions. Um, if you're not familiar with um, the state system, which may very much parallel your local system, the hourly employees are called OPS or other personnel services. Uh, we do have 20 of those positions, got two vacancies there, working hard to get those positions filled. 70 full-time positions uh, right now, and we have three vacancies, again, working to fill all those vacancies. So uh, really a wonderful time in the division with uh, new faces to um, add to those of us who have, like me, who've been here for a little while. But anyway, I just always want to keep you up to date with what's going on with division staffing. So if we move forward here, we'll talk about upcoming legislative sessions. You guys, don't you? I mean, you, I'm sure you feel like I do. We just finished legislative session for heaven's sake, but we've got to start thinking about these upcoming sessions. Um, our next legislative session will be um, an early session. So that'll be January 11th through March 11th. And sorry, I got to silence my phone there. Um, so we have early session in 2022. The thing that makes that even um, more interesting um, is that committee weeks, which are those five or six weeks of pre-session work, when we have early session, happens, of course, even earlier, right? So uh, session, uh, sorry, excuse me, committee week starts September 20th and will go until December 3rd. They'll then take sort of that the, the bulk of uh, December and in, in they're into early January and then kicking off legislative session on January 11th. So we do have um, early session in 2022. So lots of, of work that will um, be accomplished late summer um, as we move into the fall, getting ready for the 2022 legislative session. Uh, so just always want to keep you kind of thinking about that and, and that cycle. So also want to keep you um, in the loop on our councils and boards. Uh, the Division's Citizen Support Organization, or to be to use the technical and proper name of the organization, the Friends of the State Library and Archives, Inc. Um, provides support for division activities and facilitates awareness of the division and on behalf of the division. They will be meeting uh, together next week on Tuesday and Wednesday for their quarterly meeting. Um, so if you're interested in attending that meeting or learning more about the division CSO, I would love to uh, provide you that information or have you join us at um, to attend the meeting. It is a publicly noticed meeting, so you certainly are, are welcome to attend. It will be a virtual meeting. In addition, we have our State Library Council to provide advice and assistance related to programs and projects and services, specifically related to federal funding. Um, they met in late May to do their initial LSTA application review, and they will come together to meet again. Uh, to uh, work on 
our ARPA funding recommendations, which we'll talk about um, in a few moments, as well as some additional LSTA dollars. So those that it has to do with our DLIS councils and boards. And, and sort of before we move on, I do want to make sure, because I, I know I have not said um, in all the time this afternoon, uh, I, you know, we do want to answer your questions. We do want to um, hear from you. So if you have questions, as Tom said at the top of the housekeeping, you know, feel free to raise your hand. We'll get you unmuted. We'll um, let you ask your question uh, or put it in chat. That's also fine. So, you know, just um, please make sure to, uh, and, and there should be plenty of time at the end also to ask questions. So with all that, we'll just kind of keep m moving on, but um, but just wanted to make sure that you knew that this is certainly, while I can't see you and we're not together physically, uh, this is an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you might have. So we'll move uh, forward here and talk um, with a lot uh, with a lot more detail about the budget cycle as well as the looking at the division's budget. Uh, what you have here um, in, in front of you is um, the yearly budget cycle. Um, and what I've what I've done here is I've updated this uh, for uh, you know uh, this next um, for this next budget year and budget cycle. Um, the the budget, the state's budget year does start on July 1st. And as we move through early session, um, you'll see that uh, uh, represented here on this budget cycle um, as it relates to the session dates as well as the um, when the governor's bu next budget is due. Uh, the governor's budget will be due 30 days before session starts, as uh, you may recall or see on this slide. Session will start on January 11th, so we can anticipate having the governor's budget. And of course, that would be the budget for 22-23. Would be we'd have that around uh, December 11th. So just sort of already thinking about next year's budget cycle. So as we move through the next couple of slides, we're going to look in particular about um, uh, programs here in the divisions um, budget. And so this is a comparison uh, by program by grant program um, over the last three years. Um, and one of the things that is sort of of note is the middle line, which is labeled CARES and ARPA. Those are those federal um, pandemic funds that have come to us two years now in a row. Um, and so that's sort of um, if we were looking at this historically, there, you know, this is the first time um, that these funds have been uh, have been provided by the federal government. Uh, so, I, but I did want to include them there because those are funds that we are uh, using as part of a um, special grant program. Um, those the other lines there are also grant programs, our library cooperative grants, the state dollars that go to our to the divisions partners, the multi-type library cooperatives, um, as well as our LSTA, our federal grant program that funds both statewide projects and uh, the competitive projects, state aid to libraries, public library funding out of the um, general revenue. Um, and, and for 2021-2022, uh, the 19.4 million there listed is a combination of, of both state and federal revenue as a, um, uh, authorized by uh, the Florida legislature. And our last line there, a public library construction um, line uh, with no state funding uh, in this particular year. I will say just as a, a matter of interest, uh, at the top of the next hour, at four o'clock, I do have a national, uh, well, I, it's a meeting with my colleagues from across the nation uh, to talk about the Building America's Libraries Act and what ALA sees as sort of next steps for that. So I'll be interested to, to learn something about what is the, the current thinking uh, by the American Library Association and potentially IMLS this next hour. So don't I can't update you about that quite yet, but I'll know a little bit more this afternoon about what the current thinking is on that. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to give you a budget comparison by program over the last three years. We'll continue to look at some budget um, uh, items. We've got some, a comparison here by category. There are uh, three different budget categories um, that the division uses. We have general revenue funds. Um, those federal funds that we 
that we talked about just a few minutes ago, and we do also have a records management trust fund. These are dollars that we bring in and fees for training and copies and uh, storage um, that we then use to uh, pay for those uh, staff and 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 uh, services out of those same funds. So that that's another part of our budget. Again, that you'll notice in the 2021 year and the 2020 sorry, the 2020-2021 column, as well as in the 2021-2022 column on the Federal Grants Trust Fund um, being increased because of the CARES funds and the ARPA funds respectively um, there. That's why there's a significant uh, uh, increase in those funds from the 2019-2020 year. So again, just looking at, at the budget comparison uh, uh, for three years there. We'll now look at some five-year funding histories. Um, wanted to provide here um, just a, a look at the overall, so across all three budget categories, the overall appropriation for uh, the division. And of course, this is indeed as um, appropriated by the, the, the state legislature um, and looking at the, the projection for uh, the fiscal year 2021-2022, which for us starts on July 1st. So looking at that uh, a particular, uh, com and especially compared to some of the previous years, again, recalling that, um, that those ARPA funds, those federal funds are, um, you know, included here because this is all three budget categories. Again, being an appropriation, um, as you all I know are used to, the appropriation is is and can be different than the actual expenditures, right? You know, what you have, what you've spent at the end of the year uh, should be, of course, equal to the appropriation. Of course, that's the ideal, but certainly can be less than the original appropriation. And and since we still have about three weeks left in the in the year, I'm still working on what our final expenditures will be for the 2020-2021 year. So anyway, just giving you a five-year funding history there. Looks next looked at program by program in our grant programs that we saw a few moments ago. The state aid to libraries, looking at the five-year funding history here. Again, you'll note that 2021-22, um, uh, uh, $2 million-ish higher than uh, the previous year, which is always wonderful. To um, Always wonderful when we see an increase. Of course, not uh, where we were in 2017-18 or certainly even back further, as many of you may recall, but um, certainly nice to have uh, a tick uh, to the positive and state aid to libraries for 2021-2022. I'm looking at an, another program, the Library Cooperative Grants. This is the GR funds going to our uh, the division's partners, the multi-type library cooperatives. $2 million is a, um, a appropriated for our next fiscal year, which is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, looking at the next slide with public library construction grants, we, you know, this again, we saw this on an earlier slide, knowing that there's uh, just this looking at this five year funding history. Um, we, you know, this is a, a, a program that has clearly uh, had not much funding over the last several years. Uh, again, the um, the division has certainly been in conversation with the American Library Association as well as uh, the COSLA, the chief officers of state library uh, agencies about the need for uh, that federal uh, uh, library infrastructure construction dollars. So certainly, again, stay tuned with me on that. Let's let's see what, what might happen. Um, so looking at our federal grant program, the Library Services and Technology Act um, funding there, looking at the um, what we have in the federal allotment as well as what's going into external awards. Again, we can see in the last, well, in the in the current year we're sitting in, as well as the year we'll go into, the, that increase based on the um, those federal dollars that were um, infused into the state and directly into the to the division um, so to uh, as pandemic relief. And for both the CARES Act and the ARPA funds, the, they were 100% turned around um, into uh, a grant 
uh, program. So, uh, and again, that will uh, that is what will happen with the ARPA funds. I'll go ahead and say it now, but um, also uh, probably again uh, in a bit. The ARPA program at this point uh, for the DLIS ARPA program, um, we will be doing a call for applications at this time. We do not have an exact timeline. We are working to develop the uh, and finalize the application. And so uh, sometime, I would say in the next six to eight weeks, uh, that uh, those who are interested will definitely see a call for applications uh, from, uh, from us for that $6.7 million that you see there in that uh, final box in the federal allotment. So stay tuned. Um, and by stay tuned, I mean, you can watch our webpage. You can certainly watch our social media. Um, we will be sending out emails to all of our listservs. I invite you to contact me or anyone else at the division um, so that you can, you know, do whatever works for you to stay tuned about the opportunity uh, to, uh, pro to uh, provide a grant application to apply. Those are the words I was looking for, to apply for uh, the ARPA funds through uh, the division. Certainly there are other ARPA funding programs um, out there and going on. I know IMLS has got an active call for grants um, at present. Um, I know that the Florida Humanities Council will be um, releasing a grant program. So again, this is one of those times where there may be multiple uh, potential opportunities for you all to uh, to tap into some of this funding and we're going to do our best to keep uh, you all in the loop about what those opportunities are. So that's one of the roles that we play is trying to help get that information out. Um, so anyway, that's the, the, about the ARPA funds. So sort of um, moving to the next slide, one other thing that I wanted to make sure to bring up today um, because uh, in the state's general um, administrative act, uh, there is $700,000 in the Department of Education's budget. And what I've done here is given you what may be a poor uh, resolution <laughs> uh, uh, image of the language that is in the state budget. And what you can see here is the 700,000 um, in line 125. And what it says is online adult high school program for state library system. Well, here in the state of Florida, we don't have a state library system, but what we do understand is that that is for uh, libraries in the state uh, and, and public libraries, uh, certainly in particular, but uh, potentially other kinds of libraries as well, um, to provide this online adult high school program. At this point, I do not know what that program will be. Um, and I am working to make contact with the Department of Education to provide support in their um, procuring a vendor who would uh, provide this, uh, this product. So I, again, I invite um, anyone that's uh, hearing my voice here uh, this afternoon or, or watching the recording later on, if this is a project that is of interest to you and you would like to uh, stay in the loop or know more about it, again, we're gonna provide lots of information through newsletters, social media, um, you know, every way possible um, in order to make sure that libraries that want to participate in this uh, particular program will have the opportunity to do so. Um, but this is a part uh, of, of funding in the state budget that takes effect July 1st, where um, it's not directly into the division's budget. And so therefore I, at this time, don't know as much about how this will proceed. Um, but I am working to make contacts within the Florida Department of Education so that I will have um, more knowledge than I have today about this um, particular opportunity that's upcoming. So stay tuned on that. Um, with that, we're kind of leaving the budget um, part. Um, I do know that I had um, one question prior to the um, uh, to the webinar about, um, about to the presentation today about the maintenance of effort and where we are on the maintenance of effort uh, for 21-22. 
And uh, that's a really great question. Uh, maintenance of effort is required for our federal funds. Um, and the maintenance of effort is the whole entire general revenue budget of the division. Um, and at this point, because I don't have final expenditures in the current year for 2020, 2021, um, I can't yet very accurately predict what our maintenance of effort amount would be for 21, 22. Um, what I will say at this time is that I, the, the budget for the state budget for 2021-2022, um, every category um, was funded that we would use as part of that maintenance of effort. So I believe as best as I can right now that we are, um, we are fine on maintenance of effort for 2021-2022. There are lots of other factors to be um, factored in there and not to get too uh, technical or nuanced, the 2020-2021 division's GR budget fell below maintenance of effort. And that is, that's indeed true um, based on um, mostly the veto of the library cooperative grant program. Um, once I get the final expenditures, for 2020, 2021, I'll be able to determine how far below maintenance of effort we are and we'll look at what kind of impacts we have. Um, but, the, but the question asked was for 2021, 2022, um, and at best I can estimate right now, we are, we're probably pretty close to the mark and that's good news. So anyway, I could certainly uh, take more questions on that um, later or uh, you know directly, through direct conversation or email or whatever uh, makes sense for folks. So we'll move on and away from budget at this time, but but know that um, I'm more than happy to answer any kind of questions that you might have. So as far as upcoming grant deadlines, um, we, as I said a minute ago, but it's a good opportunity for me to say again, I, I need you to stay tuned for a division ARPA grant opportunity. That's the $6.7 million dollars. Uh, that the uh, Institute of Museum and Library Services has um, awarded to uh, Florida um, and will flow through the Division of Library Information Services. We will do a call for grant applications um, and we will be turning that $6.7 million around as um, a, in a grant program. So stay tuned on that. Um, that will happen sometime this summer. Um, and I would say, with um, you know, stay tune the next uh, four to six weeks uh, to, for that notice, uh, for that information about the grant application period opening. So just stay tuned and, and reach out at any point. We're happy to tell you what we know. Um, we also have a de an upcoming deadline in this, this calendar year, 2021, in October for our state aid to libraries grant program. So that's that traditional October 1st uh, deadline for public libraries to apply for state aid to libraries. So always upcoming deadlines, always, uh, whatever point in the year we are, we always have upcoming deadlines. Moving on, we'll talk about a couple of other programs that are uh, here across the, uh, the division. I always want to make sure that you're aware about our statewide resource sharing platform, Flynn Share It. Uh, Flynn Share It was just launched um, on October. Uh, sorry, on August 17th, so we're not quite a year old, uh, so still very a young program. Uh, we currently have 74 participating libraries, and they have shared over 15,000 items through Flynn Share It, and as an added um, benefit, uh, those participating libraries have been able to download over 3,000 mark records, so um, a great way to, to um, both uh, manage resource sharing uh, as well as have an opportunity to to get access to mark records so um, we would love to have you become a Flynn share at library um, please reach out to me or, or any division staff member will get you more information about that if you would uh, if you need it or would like to have it 
So moving on, thinking about a couple of other things, this is one of those times when um, we have the great, uh, uh, wonderful uh, opportunity uh, to have uh, two different books that um, we are going to be sending out more information about um, if you would like copies in your collection. Um, they are the, the two books. I've, I've got the cover art there for you. Uh, Counting the Days by Janine Mason is one of the books, a, a children's book. Um, and then Florida's Fabled Ends by Louise Frisbee. So I we have a number of copies of both of these titles. And again, I'm going to be sending out an email. Um, and then there'll be a, a way that you can indicate to us how many copies of these books, if any, uh, you might like to have to add to your collection. Um, I do see, I'm going to take a, a second here. I do see there's a question in the chat. I just need to read it for a second. And the question is, um, if you've already received a CARES Act or if you already have an LSTA grant, either funded or recommended for funding, are you still eligible for ARPA grant funding through DLIS? And the answer is absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Um, the, you, know, you could have CARES Act, you could have funding, you can have uh, ARPA funding, and you can have LSTA funding all at the same time. That's There's no um, uh, sort of, if you will, prohibition against that. I will say that the CARES Act funding will be, uh, the projects will be winding up towards September 30 um, and the ARPA funds will probably uh, not be available be and being sort of released until uh, long about that same time. So maybe um, end of September, beginning of October or mid-October even. Um, so yes, absolutely not a problem at all to have um, the, the uh, sort of applications in, in various, or better said, sorry, projects in various states of, of completion in all three of those federal uh, grant programs. A great question and absolutely um, allowable. So moving forward, thinking about the Next Level Library Leadership Institute, um, we are going to have another year of our NILI um, for 21-22, uh, and thank you to our great partners at Nephlin uh, for providing a lot of support and coordination for our uh, NILI program. You'll see there that we have um, uh, the applications have just opened, and so if you are a silly graduate, um, then, um, in, and that would be silly year one through silly year 14, um, you are eligible to apply, but I would, you know, don't take my word for it, go to our webpage and check it out, see all about it, ask some of your friends if they attended Nelly about how wonderful an experience it is. The, um, the Next Level Library Leadership Institute um, is a, a program that takes Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute graduates and sort of actually does move them it to um, and through the next level and the next set of learning with a group uh, a cohort in order to um, in order to uh, uh, investigate uh, their leadership opportunity. Uh, so and, and great, uh, there's wonderful. Um, uh, uh, comments there in the chat. Uh, thank you, Regina, uh, talking about how what a great program it is, and thank you for for recommending it as well. Um, it's been great, wildly successful in our first year. We're going to have a second year, and the great news is for those of you who are interested in either participating directly or having a recommending staff or friends to participate in the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute, that will be returning. That program will be returning. Um, look for. A, an application for silly year 17 um, to be announced next summer. That would be summer 2022. And that silly year 17 would start in October of uh, 2022. But for, for now, for this next upcoming year, we're going to do another uh, year of the Next Level Library Leadership Institute. So please um, encourage your friends and colleagues and, and um, 
and coworkers, um, if they're silly graduates, to to apply and to participate. That's wonderful. So, so moving forward, thinking about the public library directors meeting, um, we will be holding that meeting on December seventh and eighth here in Tallahassee at the Marjorie Turnbull um, Conference Center at on Florida State University's campus. So it's got a picture there of their front door. Um, this facility is really wonderful, um, a beautiful conference room facility, and we will have the ability to. Um, I hope I'm using the right words, but broadcast live for those who are unable to uh, come to Tallahassee, um, you would be able to uh, attend the sessions um, in real time as those of us are here sort of in Tallahassee um, attending the public library directors meeting. So um, more coming about that, but December 7th and 8th, um, of course, at this time, um, we are, um, uh, having to operate under the um, what is it the, the the guidance that's the word I'm looking for the guidance of Florida State University um, and so um, we'll have to determine you know it's possible that the room and and capacity would be capped at lower than sort of pre-pandemic time so stay tuned with me on that working with FSU on that, so just, just stay tuned. Uh, but we're really excited to use this facility um, and to be hosting it in Tallahassee again. There is a question, um, has a hotel been selected? Not yet, that's a great question. Um, and like you're reading my mind, um, our great partners in this project, the Tampa Bay Library Consortium, they're working on um, a, getting a hotel block right now, uh, or maybe, I don't mean like right now, like at 3.33 on June the 10th, but like soon, uh, they're, they're they're issuing their RFP right now and we will have information about a, a hotel so um, we'll we'll have a hotel block for you um, and all that way it's paid for if you you certainly are welcome to find a room on your own if you do that um, we will not be able to pay for it so if, if you're familiar at all with the directors meeting um, in the past the division um, and, and currently the division pays with our partners, the Tampa Bay Library Consortium, TBLC, we pay that hotel bill. That, In that case, you have to be in the hotel where we have a block of rooms um, and under the umbrella of our contract. So if you you know, venture out to a different hotel, that's perfectly wonderful, uh, that would just be on your own. So just making that, uh, that clear. But we'll, more information coming, there will be um, information about the selected hotel uh, sometime a little deeper into the summer. I would uh, say by our current plan, um, that would be uh, later July or August. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll get that information to you for sure. And glad you're thinking about coming to Tallahassee. We're, we're excited about that. All right, so going on and thinking about another um, wonderful uh, program that we've got uh, going on. Most of you all who have uh, been around me or, or us, the division that all in the last many years have heard us talking about a statewide digital platform. This is something that we have been planning for and uh, uh, working towards uh, since actually 2014, but actually before then also. Um, I would, um, we, the division um, is currently an active uh, uh, work in a procurement um, model uh, to be able to move this statewide digital platform forward and have it actually come to fruition. So again, this is a teaser um, in, in that um, this is coming finally <laughs> to a to a division near you um, that we are we're we're really excited in the division to be doing this work and to be able to bring you more information. Of course, at this time, you know, I, I really number one, of course, I can't uh, talk about the the procurement, but I also because we're we're we know what we'd like to have as far as features. We need to wait and determine what features a vendor might have before we could you know, go into a lot of specifics. But anyway, again, many of you have heard at many directors meetings and other opportunities about uh, the statewide digital platform and, and just wanted to put in a plug to let you know that it really is on its way, which is really exciting. 
So another new program that's on its way, uh, Public Library Economic Impact Study. So we're so excited to be able to say that we have um, inked a, a contract with the University of Florida's Bureau of Economic and Business Research, and they are going to be doing, or they are actually now currently working on a public library economic impact study, um, as well as a longitudinal uh, major events study uh, related to the last 20 years. So um, we have provided our new great friends at the University of Florida with 20 years of public library uh, statistics from that, um, from your uh, great submission to the annual statistical report for Florida's public library. So they have 20 years of data. They're using that data and meshing that data with um, major events in the state of Florida and other data sets that show sort of um, other events, hurricanes, oil spills, um, those sorts of things, other kinds of events, and then uh, going to be looking at that and, and uh, what the impact of public libraries uh, is. So we're really excited about this public library in economic impact study. We'll have study results, so we're, we're anticipated to have study results by the end of this calendar year, 2021, uh, which we hope will put us into a, a good posture of having um, information as we're you know heading into legislative session that'll sort of hit between committee weeks and the start of session but still we're going to have some really great information um we we don't yet know uh because this is we are we are not replicating the return on an investment study so just to be clear on that um, we're doing something uh, slightly different with this economic impact study. And so um, we're not quite sure what the collateral materials will look like, but um, I feel sure that we will have collateral materials and we will have information up on our webpage. So really excited about the public library economic impact study. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. So with that, we'll go to the next slide. And I just, uh, you know, that I, this, I love this picture of this very weary traveler. I don't know that any of us feel this way right now about travel. As a matter of fact, I'm a little bit excited to tell you the truth about um, the opportunity and potential for travel, both for work and for pleasure. Um, so it seemed like a, a, this really humorous photo to use today, maybe even more so than normal. One of the things that I wanted to let you know as we're together the, uh, this afternoon is that um, the the things are uh, opening up from the standpoint of our being able to travel. So I would ask that um, you keep us in the loop when you have events that you would like uh, division staff to attend. Um, and also, uh, I have a special request today. Uh, the Secretary of State would love to be um, invited or um, to be uh, uh, welcomed um, at libraries all across the state and libraries of all types. So um, two, two different ways um, that can happen. Uh, one, of course, I would ask that you reach out to me and then let me make that um, request of the Secretary's office, although, of course, you could reach directly to the secretary's office that's fine also um, but one it would be like you know for any sort of uh, ribbon cutting or any sort of event like that we could certainly see if the secretary is available and if she could if she could come down uh, for that the other opportunity that I'm going to um, make sure happens is that as I find out that the secretary is planning a trip to any part of the state I am going to uh, lean hard on, um, on on having an opportunity for the secretary to visit uh, libraries throughout the state. I'm really excited uh, to be able to um, have her come and see you all uh, all across the state state doing the incredible work that you all are doing um, in public libraries, in school libraries, in academic libraries, at special libraries. Um, I'm really excited. So, so know that all of this is going on and, and if you have something coming up um, that you would like to see if, uh, if that could work out, um, I would invite you to, to contact me or contact any division staff member. It is best for us if, and I know sometimes this is hard, but it is best for us if we can have um, as much as two to three months notice to plan. Um, if, if not, 
don't let that bar you from from sending that request. But um, uh, obviously, the, the, it's, I'm sure like for you, uh, travel does involve a bit of paperwork and and a number of different approvals. So anyway, that's just that's just the the. Uh, uh, sort of the plea for for uh, for opportunities to get the secretary to travel and to come um, see you all and see uh, the incredible work that you all are doing in person. I can't wait. She's she has visited a couple of libraries in the Tallahassee area um, and has you know really enjoyed uh, her time and doing that. And I'm really looking forward to getting her not only I mean also back to local libraries but also across the state. So appreciate your help with 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 helping me uh, get that done. So thinking about some other um, uh, programs and services that we provide, um, our table of content service. I always want to um, remind you about the table of content service. Um, this is a service to sort of, uh, you know, what uh, the, uh, an opportunity to indicate which uh, journals or, or, or titles you're interested in. You tell us which titles, we'll send you um, the table of contents and you let us know which um, articles you'd like. So uh, sign up for the table of content service. It's really wonderful. Um, and, and I got a question in the chat. Um, are visitors um, allowed? And yes, we the RA Gray Building is open. Uh, the museum is open. Our cafe is open. The research room is open. Um, and yes, so we would love to have visitors uh, here uh, in downtown Tallahassee. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. I should have I should have remembered to say that. So come come see us. Come see us. Yes, good. We'll look forward to seeing lots of folks. And, and certainly in December, as we talked about, right? At the director's meeting, but of course, but before December as well. Absolutely. So thinking about a couple of other things that are just good reminders, our professional resources. Always want to remind um, you all when we're together that any staff member of a public library, a public school, or a public academic library can get a state library card, uh, an e-card, to access the library literature database and our collection of professional e-books. So make sure to uh, make use of our professional resources we also have professional ebooks. We've got it, yeah. Um, so happy to um, to share these. A large uh, collection um, that um, we also have a large collection of print titles that can be uh, sent to you through interlibrary loan. Um, and of course, through our uh, Flynn share it. We've got to just say that. Put that little plug in one more time. But our resource sharing platform. So um, yes. So please make sure to to think of us as, if you will, our. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Now I'm tongue tied. Think of us as your reference collection and your sort of research crew. Uh, I know you've got wonderful staff um, uh, there uh, at your library, but know that we're here uh, to provide. Uh, uh, service to you all um, in that capacity as well with our collection here and the um, Bureau of Library Network Services are also known as the State Library. So I think my, my last, uh, well, no, I've got a couple more reminders, continuing education, we always have great things coming up. Um, and so I hope you'll stay in tune and um, with the continuing education opportunities that are afforded. Um, of course, our partners, the multi-type library cooperatives have incredible uh, training and events, both um, online as well as in person. Um, we do have Florida Library webinars, which is a great resource for training. We have division webinars and quite a number coming up. Stay tuned on our website for those. Uh, the records management seminars, um, we are, we'll be um, working to, uh, we're currently doing online, but we'll be bringing back our face-to-face um, -face records management seminars and of course, our friends at Web Junction. An upcoming um, uh, DLIS or division webinar that's, uh, that I wanna highlight is on June 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern, that is the next DLIS discussion. And the topic for this month is lockers. And so we have um, some libraries who already have installed lockers. Um, and then of course, libraries who'd like to learn more about the experience that folks uh, had in installing lockers or might be considering installing lockers. So join us on June 21st at 3 p.m. Uh, for the topic of lockers at our DLIS discussion. But I'll check out all the great continuing education um, opportunities because there, there are loads of wonderful opportunities. Uh, rule revisions. Um, I say, 
Lisa, great question, how to join the locker discussion. I'm making myself a note. It, it is up on our CE webpage, but I will send you an email um, so that I can make sure that you have that, that uh, direct to that URL within our webpage. So I'm just making a little note here with a circle and a star, so I will get that done. That, thank you, Lisa, thanks, great question. So a um, reminder about rule revisions, I will say that um, the Division of Library Information Services is always in a perpetual state of rule revision. Um, this just happens to be the rule that we are currently working on and actually currently sort of finishing up our electronic record keeping um, rule. Um, just as a, a side note, um, in case this is not something that you've heard me talk about before, rulemaking is how uh, we, as uh, the Division of Library Information Services, carries out state law. Um, and so if you um, follow or if you go to flrules.org and you um, get an account, you can say which rules you would like to follow and it will actually give you alerts when we're working on a rule that you're interested in. Um, so we, I think teed up next, we are gonna be doing some more record schedule um, revisions and then we'll also have a revision to our grant program coming down the pike in a couple of months. So always always rule revisions happen in here in the Division of Library Information Services. We also, um, if you're not interested in following at flrules.org, you can see um, all active division rule work uh, through our webpage. So that's another place you could stay in tune on what's going on with rule revisions. Always want to remind you about our social media platforms and, and how you can stay informed. And of course, we've got great newsletters that I hope you're um, already um, a part of and, and subscribing to. If not, let me know and I will uh, get you hooked up with all of our um, newsletters or and not. Um, I won't automatically sign you up. What I'll do is let you pick which ones you want to sign up for. But anyway, we do have some great newsletters. And with that, I will say that our next update is scheduled for September 9th. Well, you know, I, I mean, as soon as I was saying that out of my mouth, I was like, how can that, that's gotta be, I got the wrong date on there, but I don't, that's three months from now. Um, so three months from now is September 9th. And so there is um, when our next division update will be three months. Um, from now, and uh, uh, Lisa, just calling your attention uh, to the chat because um, folks have put in there the um, the link for you. That's great. Thank you so very much. That way, if I can't read my note, uh, <laughs> you'll have the information there. But I, uh, you know, maybe you'll get it twice. That that's that, that. It never hurts to get things twice for sure. So with that, um, we'll I'll, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Um, or anyone might have, um, I will, oh my heavens. Oh, there it is. I was like, wait a minute, there's supposed to be a question mark. <laughs> ah, that's fancy. Okay, well, with that and my fancy question mark, um, are there any other questions that people might have uh, today? And if not, I, I just let me say, sorry, that um, I don't have, I don't have any more content um, to present today. Um, this is all the content. I do have um, my email address and phone number, um, which I'll, is uh, um, Allison. Thank you. We'll, we'll after my fancy question mark. Um, that way you know or are reminded on how to get in touch with me. But um, are there any questions from from anyone? Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Tina. I guess with that, um, I will um, say I'm happy to stay on because this is what I have on my calendar until four o'clock. So I am happy to stay on um, and answer any questions, but we ha I do I don't have any additional uh, content to present today. So um, if you would like the gift of 10 minutes, um, I can give you that gift. So thank you everybody. Oh, it's great to see everybody. Thanks. I'm gonna mute myself for a second and take a big sip of water. So hang out.
thanks everybody for the, the, the wonderful chat messages. Deborah's chat there. I I, I do. Deborah is that's my library. I gotta I gotta um get uh down there and turn in some books before they're uh they're overdue. So uh yeah, I will I will get there. And, and right, Emily, I like you, I was excited about the Leon County Library Survey and receiving that this week. That was really wonderful. Great things going on here in Leon County and elsewhere across the state, of course. Well, thank you, everyone. If there are no other um, no other questions, or I mean, I'm, again, I'm happy to stay on. But I think with that, this again, this is Amy Johnson. With um with with that, and with not hearing any questions, we can go ahead and turn off the recording, and 